welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Welcome, welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so excited to have you with me today. Welcome back listeners. Today we have Whitney Baker on the show. Whitney, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. Hi. (laughs) Thank you, thank you for being here today. And so I would love to jump right in. We're going to jump right in. Tell the listeners, yeah, a little bit about you, about the podcast that you host, and what is it that lights you up right now? Oh my gosh. Well, I hey, great first question because <laughs> the podcast actually is really lighting me up right now. My company, I'm a heart-based entrepreneur. My company is Electric Ideas, and it's all about cracking women's hearts open with this new sense of possibility. I like the idea of just like reconnecting women with this lightning bolt from within and into their inner knowing and giving them this sense of possibility because And a lot of why my company and my podcast was birthed was because I went through a huge period in my life that was just murky Mm -hmm. and I was causing myself a lot of unnecessary suffering and I was definitely in the little kid's zone and I just felt so stuck and I got so obsessed with my stuckness that I just didn't know where to go. And I don't want that for other women. I want to light women up. I want to help move them through. So that's what I'm excited about right now. (laughs) Yes. Yes. They say we turn our mess into our message because we have gone through it and we have lived it. So it becomes like our passion, our like mission to help people not, not suffer like you were saying. And so that is, I love everything that you were saying. And I know my listeners are in for a treat today. Absolutely. I just saw something yesterday that so resonated with me and I, I feel called to share. It was like, it was that I wasn't buried during that time that I was planted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one resonates. That one resonates. When you think of it that way, it definitely takes away the darkness because it, t- it feels like more of a hibernation. It feels mm-hmm. like more of a protection. Yeah, it feels so much better to think of it that way versus the I am stuck and I'm completely buried and there's no way out because there is always mm-hmm. a way out. So I would love to jump right in and talk about that stuckness piece because you said something that really touched me that I even wrote down was we are never as stuck as we might think we are. And so I would love for you to unpack that a little bit for our listeners because I know there's people that are listening right now that may feel that they're in a situation where they are, they feel stuck and our minds when we make that belief it's true at the moment mm-hmm. for us. <laughs> so mm-hmm. how can we start to, to weed our way out of that? Sure. Well, I think what happens, especially to a lot of moms and you're trucking along with your career and then you start having kids and life just gets full and it's really, really easy. And it happens all the time for us to get into this habit of completely head down pouring into others' needs, responding to the water hose of other people's needs and completely losing our feeling of connectedness to what we need in our own self and our own intuition. When I had kids, I'll give you the quick version, but I felt like so many moms out there either knew, oh, I'm definitely going back to work or I'm quitting and I'm going to focus on mom. And I was confused. I wanted it all. And I strive so hard to try to like do it all. And I tried, Josie, let me tell you, I tried everything over the course of a year and a half. I had two daughters that are 14 months apart. Oh, wow. And I tried, I worked at a global marketing agency as a creative director. And I tried working five days. I tried working four days. I tried working three days. And I just hit a point where I was done. And when I quit, 
I thought that all of a sudden, magically, my life was going to be like perfect. And I still had a lot of self-discovery and unwinding to do. But I will say back to answering your question, when we are so head down and doing, 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 and we've lost that soul connection, it's really easy to forget that we all have the power to choose Mm -hmm. our lives power to choose. That is so powerful. The power to choose our lives. So when you're feeling stuck, remembering that in that moment or in the moments to come, that you have that power of choice is what you're saying is going to help you start to see a bigger picture. Yes. And then you lean into that possibilities that you're talking about. Yes. I think two things. One, I think just for your moms listening who have younger kids, it's really hard to process that that isn't just what motherhood is because you're not used to it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it is like a a waterfall and it's all the feels and it's beautiful. And I love being a mom. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's so meaningful for me, but it's just, it's overwhelming when they're little and eventually you will come up for air. But it's hard to know that when you're in the like, oh my God, I'm like chasing racing phase, right? Yes. So yes, it's so true when you're in that phase at the beginning where you're just like, uh, every day starting to look the same. I am stuck in the house. I even heard somebody, I think it was one of my very first clients. She was like, I just feel like I am like the babysitter. I am the nanny. I am. That is the job that I do is I show up as the nanny. And instantly that is a belief that you're putting into your mind that's causing you to feel stuck. So how can we start to unwind those thoughts that are in our minds telling us we are like, we are the nanny, we are the babysitters. Like we, like you were saying, how can I work and stay home? How can I take care of these kids? Like, I just want to like really unpack this, like getting unstuck a little bit because I think it's so powerful. I do too. I think that one of the biggest pieces that women need to understand is there's no right or wrong way to be in work and in motherhood. Only you are going to know what's right for you and your family. Mm -hmm. So some women in my community are working full times, they're CEOs, and they've got a situation and that is what they're called to do. And they freaking love it. And they're going to raise some really fired up daughters who are leaders and awesome. There's some of people in my community are stay at home moms and they're like, that's their passion. That's where they show up. They feel lit up Mm -hmm. and that's what they want to do all the time. Most of us are somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Right. (laughs) And so I would say one trap, I think a lot of women get into, especially if you quit, if you try to work and you finally are a lot of women, this is so common in my community. A lot of women hit like a burnout and they just Mm -hmm. are like, I just cannot do it anymore. And they quit, but then they overcompensate and they just pour everything into being mother moms in their motherhood bucket. And I don't think that's serving them or their child either, Mm -hmm. right? So I think what, as you start to navigate your motherhood journey, one of the things that's helped me is remembering quality over quantity. And even if you're a stay-at-home mom, you don't have to be a stay-at-home mom all day, every day. You have permission to do things that light you up, whether you're paid or not. You should claim your own identity. Mm -hmm. It's not even a should, it's a must. You yes. have to, yes. it's a must. I am saying it is a non-negotiable 100%. Yes. We have to claim that identity of like you're saying, making it work for you. What is going to light you up in the season that you're in? What is it that Mm -hmm. you can do to find those bits of joy in that season that you're Mm -hmm. in? And so I love that you said that we do overcompensate. So I'm going to raise my hand on that one. That one hit me right on the heart because when I quit working and I was a mom, I'm like, well, if I'm not working, I better just be the best mom on the whole planet and do everything just perfectly. Read all the books, do all the things. And you're hit the nail on the head. You get burnt out. And I literally had to be lifted up to see the light by my coach. That was like, why aren't you going outside? Why aren't you doing the things you love to do? Like, why, (laughs) why, why, why? Because, because that's what we do. We think that we have to overcompensate for it. So I love that you hit that nail on the head. And so finding bits of joy and asking for help is Mm. what comes up for me as you say that, Mm -hmm. because we can't, it takes a village. We can't do it all on our own. Right. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I have seen this so many times. Women don't even always feel comfortable asking for help from their partner. There's some sort of guilt that go that I really had to work through when you are the sole caregiver in your mm -hmm. family of thinking that you need to do it all because yeah. you're not bringing in the bread at the moment. It's just so misguided in my opinion. So heavy. Yeah, so heavy. One thing uh, that's coming up for me as we're talking about this is just remembering that you doing everything to the point of burnout and exhaustion is not serving your family. Because I think we all know the mom who is just like fried and on her cell phone and she's with her baby. I mean, look, we've all been there. This is not, oh, no. it's a judgment, as yep, a judgment no. at all. But, it's painting the picture so that we yes. can get the, we can see the light. <laughs> yes. But I think that sometimes women think they have to be with their kids every minute of every day and make everything perfect to be a good mom. And and do that role. And I think we have to remember that when we take time to care for ourselves, we're modeling and teaching mm -hmm. and inviting our children to do the same thing. And that's such a big one. That is so true. It's so true. So I'm going to move a little bit and talk about that identity piece that we're claiming. We are mm -hmm. making it a non-negotiable. So how are we shifting our identity so we can feel like ourselves again? Mm -hmm. Like, because you says you have, you have gone through the journey of doing this for yourself. Yes. One of my favorite practices that I'll share is because people are like, how do you manage your time? I'm like, I don't manage my, I do manage my time to a degree, but I'm, I am all about energy management. And so mm. one of the first things when I teach my mastermind that we do the homework, I'll share. I hope your I hope your listeners try that is spend a week, have a little journal and literally without judging it, just be a documenter of did that drain me or feel me? And this will show you so much about your life. First of all, if you don't have barely anything on there that fueled you, that's a whole conversation, you know, but also there's so many things that we do just because they, we think that there are the things that we have to do. Like, I'll give you an example. Some women think it's so creative and fun to make like cutouts of stars for cheese and the perfect peanut butter and jelly and all this stuff. And it's just like, if that's something that you actually had fun doing, do it, but Goodness, if that was like some like random expectation that you're forcing on yourself, let that go, mm -hmm. like really track it and then see on your list at the end of the week, what you can stop doing, what you can get help with, and then where you can breathe in more of the things that energized you. Uh, it can be that simple. Can. And I think those are the things that we reject when it's easy, <laughs> when it's so easy, we're like, hmm. Is it really going to work? And I'm saying, try it on. That sounds amazing. I love that energy management, like what mm -hmm. lights you up and what drains you. And from that, you get to decide how you build your life. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Huge. Yes. And th yeah, and that will start to remind you too, what you used to like to do before you were a mom so that you can start, to, like you were saying, feel like yourself again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I encourage all moms, if you're at a point where you're just like, I don't even know what I like anymore. I'm mm -hmm. just out of touch. Sometimes I got frustrated when I was in the early phases because there was so much talk about just like, get back to you or get your body back. And it's like, <laughs> I'm not trying to go backwards. I'm trying to step into my most powerful, highest version of me mm -hmm. right now. So just because you used to like something, if it doesn't serve you anymore, let that go. Mm -hmm. But give yourself permission to try doing something that's just fun and frivolous for yourself yeah. and see how that fuels you. Yes, that's powerful exercises for us to try here. And so now I would love to move on and talk about that inner knowing. How do we tap into that inner knowing that we know what is right for us? We know what lights us up. We know what their passions are. How do we step into that and start right. to lean into it? Sometimes it's more lean in than a step into it. <laughs> It's a huge practice. I mean, for me, there's a couple things that I, over the course of years and practice that have been meaningful for me, and I will share them because I think your listeners were here. I would say if you don't have a mindfulness or meditation practice at all, it could be something to try on for size. It doesn't always have to look for me. It, it is a regular morning seated formal meditation. 
It doesn't always have to look like that, but sometimes we just don't have any stillness mm -hmm. and we have lost our ability to listen to what our body needs, what our soul is craving, what our hearts desire. So having some sort of a practice, even if it's two minutes a day where you can kind of be in stillness and give your body a break, especially if you're being clawed on and chasing a toddler around, like you owe yourself that. Mm -hmm. I also am a big proponent of an intentional morning routine. And so again, mine is, I love the word ritual because moms don't need to be, you know, have something else that's just like stiff, hard to do that if they don't show up to, they shame themselves. Mm -hmm. So without rigidity, God, I wish someone would have told me when I had really little kids that even if they're getting up at 630, get up at 620 and just do something that feels good for you where you start your day with intention mm -hmm. and like you're showing up for yourself versus literally responding to someone else's needs, which is can literally look like someone crying, mom, waking you up or someone literally pulling at you to get out of bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love the word ritual too. I love the way ritual because it feels spa like it feels like it feels good. It's something that you, mm -hmm. like you said that you do for you and it's setting that tone for the day and how it's going to start. And I do believe that the power of stillness is magic. Mm -hmm. That's the only word I have for it. It's the things that come in, the feelings that you feel if you allow yourself to go there is just so powerful. It just, you get to tap into that inner knowing you get to tap into that soul part of yourself when you are allowing yourself to sit in stillness. And so I know the question that people are going to say is how do you sit in stillness? Because people think there is a right way to meditate. And I know since you're an avid meditator, <laughs> you, <laughs> you have something to say about this. <laughs> sure. Well, I'll offer when I was starting my practice, the way that I do it, that really helped me. So if you sit down and you give yourself, first of all, I, when I try to connect with myself in my practice, everybody's can look exactly how it's supposed to look for them. But I am before caffeine and before technology. Usually when I wake up, I have just like a sense of connectivity already. And so I try to sit with that. I give myself a few minutes to just really anchor into my presence. And so I go through my senses. What am I smelling? What am I hearing? Obviously at a slower pace, I feel my seat connected to the ground and I give myself a few minutes just to scan my body, you know, maybe send a little love if I'm feeling mm. stiff for some people, just that just like it's, starting yeah. present and like sending a little love to anywhere physically in their body. That might even just be enough mm -hmm. for my practice right now. Then I drop into a mantra and I think you can pick anything that anchors you. And I kind of come back to the mantra, but for people that haven't meditated or practiced, I would just say, don't think that it has to look like no thoughts. Like the mm -hmm. more thoughts you're That's having it. it it might be a release. So I, when I have a thought, I have two images. One, I picture it kind of like a curiosity, like hmm, there's a little leaf and it's flowing on a lake. It's beautiful, but I'm just going to let it float by. I also, something that helped me that I just think is funny. Emily Fletcher actually teaches this. She taught me that welcome in your thoughts, like you're the host of the party and you're like, Hey, welcome. Yep. Thanks for coming. But I actually have to go to the bathroom, but thank you. You know, like you're welcome here. I'm not arguing here. I'm not going to mean mug you, but like, I gotta go. I'm not getting I anchored into it. this combo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so good. And I love those different options that you have given us to try on to see what fits for you because there isn't a one size fits all. You got to find what works for you for sure. And so talking a little bit about the possibilities and dreaming of new potentials as an entrepreneur, as a mom, why is that so important to be in that space of possibilities? Well, I can speak to my personal experience and I know that when I quit working, I didn't even give myself at the time. I think my ego and my identity was so wrapped up into this creative leadership role. And I was so attached to what I had done before and making sure I didn't lose that, that I didn't give myself a chance to pause. I didn't give myself a chance to breathe. And for the longest time, I forced myself to freelance until all of a sudden I had some time where 
I realized, Josie, that I was doing informational interviews and hoping that people didn't call me back. <laughs> like, for real. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it was finally, it was actually, I was lucky enough to decide finally, because the freelancing was okay, but it just didn't feel fulfilling. I was like, I'm going to work with a career coach. And I, you know, I thought that it was going to be that she helped me land the right freelancing gig. And it honestly took someone reflecting back to me that I was not even excited about what I was trying to do. I was so misguidedly attached to a past role that didn't serve me that I had not energetically allowed space for the possibility that there was something way better and bigger that was so connected with my heart mm -hmm. that could serve me. So good. So good that we have to sometimes have somebody reflect back to us for us to even have that wake up call for us to even have those aha moments because we are so in it, right? And that's why I call it the box. Like we're, we put ourselves in this self-imposed box, then we're, we are in it and we're in the thick of it. So we can't see outside of it. So having somebody for you reflect back to you, is this even something you want? Does this even light you up and you to be able mm -hmm. to actually answer from a truthful place to yourself? Mm -hmm. where oh yeah. Shifted it seems. It definitely shifted. And this is one of my messages that I have to let women know it is, it feels so dang scary. It's just a common trajectory that women either ratchet down or try to go part-time or quit whatever, whenever they have kids and it feels God awful to start over sometimes. Mm. It's so scary, especially when you've, you've gone to school, you've worked so hard and you already feel like you let that piece of you go. Cause you've been focusing on motherhood and you're like, ah. and it just, it's okay for it to feel uncomfortable, but you really have to get into a place where you allow yourself to follow what lights you up, what feels good. And I don't care. I don't care if it's like you're going to figure out like your career trajectory or just like leaning back into a life that feels intentional and purposeful. Yeah. These threads of what lights you up and brings you joy and happiness are on purpose mm -hmm. and they are linked to what you're supposed to do on this world. So good and so powerful to say that it's going to be uncomfortable because it is. And I think the moment that we feel that discomfort, we want to go back. We're like, it's wrong. It mm -hmm. feels wrong because your body is not used to you pushing through. Mm -hmm. And so I know Bob Proctor calls this the tear barrier. And that is where you are so close to getting through to the other side. You are right there, like knocking at the door, but 90% of the time or even higher, what we do is we go right back because it feels so uncomfortable. So the fact that you're saying it's going to feel uncomfortable, it's not going to mm -hmm. feel natural, but lean into that discomfort and allow yourself to sit in it <laughs> and hold yourself in that place for as long as you need to, because sometimes it's going to take a while. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it's going to take a while to get you to the other side of what is going to light you up, whether it is, like you said, in motherhood or finding a life, a new life that, that you're going to birth for yourself in motherhood is that journey. And so I would love to, in this part of the show, talk a little bit about you and your journey into motherhood. Like talk to us, <laughs> <laughs> tell us about you and your journey into motherhood. You've given us so much good stuff to chew on, to, to bring into our lives. I would just, yeah, love for our listeners to get to know you a little bit. Oh, sure. Well, let's see. What can I tell you in terms of my journey in the motherhood? I think one one thing that has really helped me again is to remind myself that it's quality over quantity and sometimes one-on-one -on -one time for 15 minutes that's really dropped in and present is far surpasses two hours of like scattered I'm working I'm kind of throwing you something time so it's not selfish to just take time for yourself. If you can get a friend, if you can get your partner, whatever. One of the things that's helped me be my best as a mom is having enough clarity to know when I have chunks of uninterrupted time, because I'm a mom, but like everybody, I'm a writer. I'm a, you know, I play the piano. I am you my yogi, but I I'm a business owner, you know, I'm a podcaster, but it's hard when you have constantly interrupted time. And that's just the name of the game. When you have little kids, try to give yourself the grace to have a little space. Mm -hmm. That's so true. It's so true. I love that. What you said that 15 minutes un uninterrupted time is going to surpass all the moments of fragmented pieces of you that your child gets mm -hmm. um, for you. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I 
would I would still love to ask you a little bit about you because you said you play the yeah. piano, you do oh, yeah. yoga, <laughs> and you're a businesswoman. Yeah. So, yes. What makes Whitney Whitney? <laughs> talk to us yes to okay <laughs> I'll tell you I, I'll tell you I'll tell you whatever I'm an open book I think that my I found out as I was like one of the unique parts and actually I think what was blocking me from getting to where I am now is mm -hmm. it's like I didn't make sense on paper. I felt like I have this like hugely like playful and like fun side. That's like, you know, I've had to get past the like too loud stuff when I was told when I was little, I've worked through all my limiting beliefs. So I'm, I'm loud and proud and fun and festive. And like one of my superpowers is like making up games and like stuff like that but I also am like super soulful and like I'm a writer I'm a journaler I'm reverential I'm so spiritual and I'm always gravitated towards this space of just like living your best life mm -hmm. and wanting to feel connected and for the longest point longest time it felt like I could never show up in the world in a way that combined these two parts of my personality, they seemed competing. Mm -hmm. It was like some people knew the like fun energized, some people knew the like deeply reflective. I'm a huge reader. I like put down books, you know, it's just, and finally I was just like, what if I can be both? And that's my superpower. So in the way I show up in the world and give permission for people to be high energy and playful and reverential has been a blessing for me to understand that healing and reflection and getting to know yourself doesn't have to always feel heavy. Mm. It can be fun. Yes. And so I think that was a long answer, but I think no, that, that was that's... a beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful answer. That's exactly, I mean, you hit the nail on the head and somebody, and even me, I resonate with so much of what you say, being told that I am too loud, too much, keep quiet. You don't want to step on anybody's toes to be like in the world. Okay. Now I'm this good girl. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be quiet too, but really, I really want to be loud. <laughs> I want to yeah. use my voice. I, yes. I want to say what I want to say when I want to say it. So it's all journey. And I love that you showed that to us that you said I had to get through these limiting beliefs to show up in the world in my fullness and mm -hmm. that is what gives the people that are listening that are hearing this message that are being touched by it permission to do the same to go on their own journey to be able to step into their fullness so thank you for sharing oh my that. gosh my <laughs> pleasure yeah I think it's the powerful and like I get to be loud and soft I get to be the martini and the cup of herbal tea baby <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So I would love for you to tell our listeners where they can come and connect with you, where they can support you and get on your journey. Where yeah. Are you, yeah. Where are you at? <laughs> so the best way to connect with me, I hang out on Instagram. My handle is at Whitney woman. And then I have a mastermind that's underway, but you know, I'm, I'll continue to have fun, exciting offerings. I do bespoke workshops. I'm located in Chicago and I travel or I, I do zoom. I've done zoom internationally. They're women only. And they both my mastermind and my workshops have the same format of exactly what I was just talking about. Like the two sides of my personality where we get to have fun and let there be light, let it be light and have that connection. But we also have a chance to really drop into that quiet inner knowing that women don't always carve out the time for. Yeah. So also, of course, my podcast we mentioned, but my podcast Electric Ideas with Whitney Baker is available anywhere where you where you enjoy podcasts. So Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Whitney. After our conversation, I always love to give the floor to my guests to speak on anything that is on their heart after we talked about shifting identities and knowing that you have options, tapping into your inner knowing and the possibilities that life has in store. I would love to know if there's something on your heart that feels left unsaid. You are worthy of rewriting and rewriting and editing and editing and recreating your life as many times and in many ways as you want to until it feels like a starburst from your own soul oh so good you can picture that you can taste it even <laughs> 
That's so good. Whitney, thank you for being a guest. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us, your heart with us. It has been a pleasure. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. It's so fun to connect and I really appreciate being here. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're going to do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcasts, places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us. Leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, yeah, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.